and welcome to Polymer Update. I am Pratiksha Karkira and joining me today is Mr. Akhilesh Bhargava, an experienced entrepreneur with an experience in plastics, PEC and PET specifically, packaging, thermoforming and plastics recycling. He is the managing director of AVI Global Plast Private Limited, India's largest producer of plastics, solutions for fruits, foods, pharma and the packaging industry. He is also the chairman of the Environment Committee for the All India Plastics Manufacturers Association. Mr. Bhargava, thank you for joining with us on Polymer Update. It's a pleasure. And today we are going to talk on is the world heading towards a plastics planet? So, so plastics are perceived negatively by many as all of us know there are a lot of anti-plastics campaigns all over and don't you think the awareness of plastics as a necessity is somewhere lacking? Uh, we are seeing this as a uh, outcome of plastics being used ab abundantly. You go look back at the 70s where paper was the material which was largely used. We felt that we would be cutting down all the trees of the world to, to just be able to use paper. Now it is the case with plastics. The growth rate of plastics has been really, really phenomenal and it has become probably a part of every person's life. Uh, now given the use it has and the, so the disposal of packaging material which is not uh, being done responsibly has created the negative uh, the negative context at which plastics is today being looked at and that's a real problem so it, yes it is a problem and yes we are a plastics world yes. so with 7 billion tons of plastics that are still left untouched for recycling and we have made an island of trash, if I must say. Now, do you think is the responsible recycling of plastics a solution, like one of the solutions to this very grave problem? In fact, it is the only solution. Um, you give, you monetize the waste and it will get picked up and it will get back in the system. It has happened in the case of PED bottles. In 2005, you would see it everywhere on the road. Today, you don't see a PED bottle on the road. It is simply because there is the, the industry worked together and worked out solutions where the, where the uh, bottle could be replacing actually resin. The, it, the bottle gets crushed, it becomes again a raw material which replaces resin in some application. This helped generate a good economic value to the waste and this model if replicated to all plastics, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be sitting on this problem. So yes, recycling is the only way forward. So, so plastics are omnipresent and they are found everywhere. Uh, when you step out of the house, you will see plastics lying everywhere. And even in our oceans, our oceans are also not left from plastics. Because in 2010, reports and researchers had suggested that 8 million metric tons of plastics had entered the oceans. And numerous cases of sea animals, be it a turtle whose uh, nose was infected with a plastic stick or a whale, in which 20 polythene bags it had swallowed. What do you think should be done to resolve this problem, you know, so that we can maintain a balance in the environment? So we actually should use plastics where it is really required, where things can be reused, design innovation should be in that, in that direction. If there are, if, if plastic bags, for example, are, be, are to be used, they should be made heavier so that they can be reused more. The whole point is you logically look at it. If anything can be reused, no person throws it. And that is what we need to head towards. When we are designing packaging as companies, as an industry, we should be able to look at that when on disposal, any, any when our consumer disposes it, it gets back easily to the recycling system. The lesser we do it, the more of these problems we will face. The problem of marine, marine litter is extremely serious. Um, it was in fact discussed in the G20 uh, meeting earlier this year and um, our country is again uh, being taken the lead to go ahead and tackle this. I am personally involved in the Warsaw Beach Cleaning Project as our association has sponsored cleaning JCB tractors, people and now we are looking on solutions on how to get it back into the recycling stream. So, so talking about plastic awareness being the major concern, the manufacturing part of, this, of it is somehow you know, targeted as the main cause for littering. 
and eventually plastics are seen in bad light. You know, talking about anti-plastics campaigns, say no to plastics. People have a totally disregard towards plastics. How can this notion be rectified, sir? We as people have a habit of putting the blame on to something else. We have, we have targeted plastics. What I would like to put across is that we need to attack the problem and not the material. Today it is plastics, once it was paper, earlier it was glass, one, at one point it was metal. So the material will keep changing. But if we don't, as a country, if we don't look at collection systems, segregation systems, recycling systems, and we don't create collectively with the government and environment so that it happens effectively, we are not going to find a solution to this. Absolutely, sir. So a blanket ban on plastic bags of 50 micron had been implemented all over India. Every state had pledged to follow this. And But how much of it is actually followed? And you know, was it a right decision to put a ban on a product which has barely any alternatives? Uh, I would say that if it is handled in an irresponsible way, we would see more of these bans. It's the lighter the plastic, the more it will fly, the more it will damage the environment. The whole idea of uh, getting it to 15 microns, the idea when the government thought of this was that it would increase the usability of, reusability of the plastics, of the, of the of bags. So I would just again put it as that if, if plastic bags are continued to be made under the regula below the regulated uh, norm, we would see more of these bans. We need, as an industry, now we need to. We don't need to wait for the government to intervene. We need to stand up and decide of what we should be doing correctly and not. Absolutely, sir. So, so plastics are used for manufacturing a lot of products, be it a household commodity or process manufacturing. So, but what about its waste that are hazardous to the society? Because does this curb the usage of it, plastic, in daily life as such? So, to start with, I would like to correct that plastics is not as hard as. There are specifically, maybe one or two specific kind of plastic if made can have some problem, but if plastics were hazardous, it wouldn't be used in medicines, it wouldn't be used uh, in our bodies, it wouldn't be used in everyday life. So, there, there, is no hazard, there is no hazardous context to the material, neither to its recycling nor to its waste. However, companies who recycle it should follow these uh, regular, uh, norms so that they are not, when, when, when you're using water for washing, the, since it is coming from uh, post consumer waste, uh, the, the, uh, the whole, it is, the recycling is handled in a very responsible manner. Uh, what plastic is doing is actually taking care of the convenience which it is giving to almost every second product which we sell. So, sir, talking about the recycling, because everybody believes in recycling these days, so a lot of innovative ideas by different people across the world. There is one person named Satish Kumar from Hyderabad. He converts dead plastic into reusable fuel. And there are many people who are called as, you know, uh, this person is the plastic man of the earth and so on. But don't you think the government, our Indian government, should be keener in promoting these ideas because eventually it would lead to a better environment? So here I would urge the government to probably come up with plastic recycling parks where they are giving some sort of concessions uh, to people who are looking at recycling. Now this, uh, like what you mentioned is pyrolysis. So pyrolysis is just one of the solutions available. Today there are many. There are people who are converting it pellets to get it into roads. There are companies who are making blocks so which can replace bricks. Um, we need to actually promote this as an industry and, uh, and the government should be giving rolling out benefits so that people are, uh, entrepreneurs are actually incentivized to come and invest in recycling more and more. So sir, lastly, a war against plastics is emerging. So with n number of campaigns, all over India, a lot of campaigns happen. So they promote say no to plastics, which is again on the verge of anti-plastics. How difficult will it be to imagine a world without plastics? So when we imagine a world without plastics, it would be more like going back to the Stone Age. It will be more like saying that we won't fly across more, we won't use mobile phones more, we won't have our medicines, we won't, uh, we won't do surgeries where we would uh, see parts, you know, get the walls which we use for your heart, tran heart, heart transplants are not made of plastic. So we are not going to do all of that. It doesn't work like this. The problem is, uh, we attack the problem 
and we work together and come together a solution for that. Attacking the material is not the way out. And I leave it at that. Thank you so much for your valuable insights, Mr. Bhargava. With camera person and KJ, this is Pratiksha Garkira for Polymer Update, the fastest growing petrochemical market intelligence company in the world. If you have enjoyed watching this video interview, please subscribe to our channel and press the button below. Thank you.